the president his historic trip overseas the saudi sit down and the deal just cut plus president trump and members of his cabinet like you've never seen them before ready to talk the former FBI director, James Comey, preparing to tell his side of the story when he will testify in front of Congress. Cabin scare, new images and details on the passenger detained on a flight to Hawaii. What happened with TSA before he boarded the flight? Trapped, students stuck on a roller coaster in a thunderstorm for more than three hours. The terrifying rescue caught on camera. And hip us big day, saying I do in style. The family drama and the high profile guest not at the ceremony. From ABC News, this is ABC World News Tonight. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday. I'm Tom Yamas. And we begin tonight with President Trump abroad, his first overseas trip as Commander in Chief. The President and First Lady arriving in Saudi Arabia after an overnight flight on Air Force One. Melania Trump not wearing the traditional headscarf. A day of dazzling pageantry, the 45th president even taking part in a ceremonial dance after accepting a gold medal welcome. President Trump and the Saudi king signing a $110 billion arms deal. The trip kicking off an eight day international odyssey with the president though still facing mounting pressure back here at home. ABC senior White House correspondent Cecilia Vega starting us off tonight in Riyadh. With all that controversy back at home, President Trump today looking like he's relishing being so far away. Participating in a traditional Saudi dance, typically a symbol of peace after a hard-fought war. The men fighting with him in that battle back in Washington, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross, right here today too, dancing with swords. Never before has an American president set foot on Saudi soil for his first trip abroad. When Air Force One touched down, the Saudi king personally greeting the president and first lady. In this religiously conservative country, Melania Trump foregoing a headscarf, following in the footsteps of first lady Michelle Obama, whose bare head sparked controversy back in 2015. Among her critics at the time, Donald Trump, who tweeted, we have enough enemies. Today, the Saudis bestowing on President Trump the kingdom's highest honor, lining the streets with American flags and billboards with his picture. But what he's not seeing? As a woman here in Saudi Arabia, I wouldn't even be allowed to go into this door at a McDonald's. I would have to go through this side that says family section, completely segregated. There is a wall here that keeps the women separate from the men. President Trump is not expected to, in a public way, address human rights or women's rights on this trip. We tried to ask the Secretary of State why. Mr. Secretary, can we expect President Trump to address human rights on this trip? No answer. Also not being talked about, the President's campaign trail comments on Islam. I think Islam hates us. There's something, there's something there that there's a tremendous hatred. Or the Muslim ban. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. In President Trump, the Saudis see an ally willing to be tougher on Iran than President Obama was. They're still angry he signed that nuclear deal with Tehran. Today, President Trump and the Saudis cut their first deal of the trip, an agreement for the kingdom to buy $350 billion in U.S. military equipment and services over the next decade. And after a week of his worst headlines since taking office, the president chalked it up to a good day. That was a tremendous day, and I want to thank you and Saudi Arabia about uh, hundreds of billions of dollars of investments into the United States and jobs, jobs, jobs. And Cecilia Vega joins us now from Riyadh. Cecilia, we saw in your piece the incredible welcome he's receiving, but tomorrow President Trump is expected to deliver a big speech to the Muslim world. He'll be talking about extremism, which was one of the most controversial topics during the campaign. It absolutely was, Tom, and the big question right now is here in the birthplace of Islam, will he say the words radical Islamic terrorism? We know that the president has been working on this speech with Stephen Miller, his aide behind the travel ban, and the president's advisors tell us that tomorrow's speech, Tom, will take a much softer tone. Many in the Middle East will be hanging on every word. All right, Cecilia, thank you. Now, following the president around this trip to the Middle East, several damaging stories back here at home.
ousted FBI Director James Comey will testify before Congress after Memorial Day. This amid emerging reports the president called Mr. Comey a, quote, nut job in that controversial Oval Office meeting with top Russian officials and that federal probe zeroing in on the White House itself. ABC's John Carl also in Riyadh for us tonight. Shortly before President Trump landed in Saudi Arabia, word of a coming showdown back home. James Comey has agreed to testify after Memorial Day in public before the Senate Intelligence Committee. The questions surrounding Comey's firing are mounting. Well, I certainly would like to know the circumstances that uh, led up to his dismissal, and particularly those conversations, direct conversations with the President of the United States. President Trump's meeting with top Russian diplomats the day after he fired Comey is casting even more doubt on the official White House explanation for his abrupt dismissal. I just fired the head of the FBI. He was crazy, a real nut job, Trump boasted according to the official summary of the meeting read to the New York Times by an American official. I faced great pressure because of Russia. That's taken off. Today, the Russians insisted they didn't have anything to say about Comey in that meeting. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov telling reporters, we have not touched this topic at all. But in an interview for this week with George Stephanopoulos, National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster didn't deny President Trump brought up Comey. The firing had been in the news, but, but I, I didn't know in advance that the president was going to raise it. When repeatedly pressed, he would neither confirm nor deny the specifics of that conversation. Is that what the president said? Well, I don't remember exactly what the president said. Yeah, the president of the United States telling the Russian foreign minister in their first meeting that the pressure is off because he's fired the FBI director investigating Russian interference in the campaign. Does that seem appropriate to you? As you know, it's, it's very difficult to take a few lines, to take a paragraph out, out of what, are, what, are, what appear to be notes of that meeting, the intent of that conversation was to say, what I'd like to do is move beyond all of the, the, the Russia news uh, so that we can find areas of cooperation. Festering saga is surely on the minds of the president's closest aides traveling with him. ABC News has learned the FBI investigation into Russian meddling has now spread to the president's inner circle, with a senior White House aide considered a person of interest. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson was asked today who that person could be. I do not have any information or knowledge regarding the person of interest uh, that's been referenced. And Jonathan Carl joins us now, also in Riyadh. Jonathan, the president has consistently complained about the number of leaks coming from the White House. How does this compare to other administrations you've covered? And are conservatives right when they warn of the so-called deep state working against the president? Well, Tom, I don't know if I would call it a deep state, but I've never seen anything like this. You have had multiple circumstances where details, actual transcripts of conversations that the president has had in the Oval Office with foreign leaders have ended up on the front pages of newspapers days after the conversations took place. I've never seen that with any other administration. Chief White House Correspondent Jonathan Carl in Saudi Arabia for us tonight. Jonathan, thank you. And George will have much more from that exclusive interview with General McMaster tomorrow on this week. Next to the harrowing moment.